Joining me now here on the MMA Report is a man stepping up on relative short notice to take on Luke Sanders, UFC Fight Night 123, next week in Fresno, California, Andre Sukutha. Andre, as always, man, I appreciate the time. I got to tell you, when I was getting ready to set this interview up, because uh, I knew that, that you were now represented by Top Game, I, I was... Uh, sending a message to their PR guy and, and I've my phone has now realized if I go S O U K and already put your name in so I don't even have to go and spell out your whole last name that, that's the best part right <laughs> it, it, is, it is the best part about the iPhone but you're stepping up here on, on short notice uh you know this is a matchup that you know you you saw you, you saw the opening was there you know nothing personal just just an opportunity for you here um, you know, it was just some of those things you, you saw that, that Brian was out and it's like, Hey man, get on the phone. Let's see if we can get this fight to take place. You know, I was eyeing a lot of the, um, a lot of the cards at the end of the year and there was so many band weight fights. So I was like, you know, someone's bombing to pull out or get hurt. And I was willing to go against anybody. Um, so, um, you know, I wasn't like in fight camp, but I was always training, you know, I'm always training, I'm always developing. Yeah. So I saw that Brian Caraway pulled out. And it was against uh, Luke Sanders, and you know, with with no hesitation, you know, I've I've been dying to fight. And when you're 0 2 in the UFC, you, I'm in no position to call the shot to get what I want. You know, I wanted to be on the Boston card. I originally wanted to be on the Fresno card, and um, I was just getting some um, responses. You know, like a 0 and 2 guy getting treated like a 0 and 2 guy. So when I saw the opportunity, you know, I, I figured I had two two and a half weeks to train for the fight. I was just like, you know what, uh, w rather than um, the UFC controlling, you know, when I fight, when I get paid, here's an opportunity for me to control my destiny and, and, and fight. And um, there you have it. You know, I, I need to get a W by the end of 2017. So it's coming. In 2017 obviously has not gone the way you had hoped. Both uh, split decision losses here in, in the UFC. Uh, how, how do you recover from those? You know, is it one of those things that you just go back and you kind of look at the fight and you try to see why two of the three judges in both those fights thought you didn't win? Man, you know, um, the first fight, it's it's really, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I kind of beat myself up a little bit um, for uh, going for the takedown, but you know, I was I was dead tired. I took that fight in about nine days, eight days notice, and. Um, you know, I, if that's the way the judges saw it, then that's the way they saw it. You know, I'm, I'm cool with that. Uh, the the second fight in Mexico, obviously, I, I felt like I won the fight. A lot of people felt like I won the fight against a tough fighter in in his in his um country. You know, um, I dropped him three times. He didn't do nothing to me. You know, he he might have took me down. One of the takedowns, I slipped, and he couldn't even hold me down. You know, he probably he probably had riding control for about. A minute all together in the fight and he never landed any clean shots and I definitely feel like I won that fight um but what can you do you know I, I lost split decision it, it was heartbreaking I was a little depressed a little bit after the fight um that's why I need I need to get this one back you know um and you know partly of it was my fault for losing that fight in Mexico I could have beat him easily you know he he's he's a tough ultimate fighter winner he, he's knocked out. He's finished a lot of tough guys. He's beat a lot of tough guys in the UFC. And that was the sixth UFC fight. That was only my second. So for me to go on and put on a show like that, you know, these 135 is no that I'm not playing. And um, I could have easily put him away, you know, but I was just thinking too much of the altitude. And I didn't want to gas myself out. And he has good cardio. And also, I was trying too much to put on the show, you know. Since I got signed to the UFC, I wanted to be that guy that everybody loves to watch fight, which I'm sure I sure I, I still am. But I've been focusing too much on that and, and putting on a show and playing the villain in Mexico because I was getting booed by a bunch of fans. Um, but now I'm back to my roots. W what got me here, you know, and, and that's um, fighting hungry. That's fighting. I need two checks because, you know, one check just doesn't do it. I, I have kids. I have a wife. I got I got to support them. And um, put food on the table, uh, pay my mortgage, you know, stuff like that. So, um, you know, I got my own mentality back. And it's sad. It's sad that I'm learning this way, you know, but um, it happens sometimes. It happens sometimes. You know, it's, it's easy to have a dream, but it's harder to live it.
Is it just basically, I guess the way to sum it up is uh, lessons learned and moved on? And is it kind of, do you view this fight as almost kind of a, a reintroduction of who you are to the UFC fan? Um, so-and-so, I mean, if you're a UFC fan and, um, you know, and you've seen me fight, you, you, you will obviously remember me. You know what I mean? If you, even if you weren't a fan... You will obviously remember me from those two fights if you've seen them. You know, uh, everybody knows that I'm an entertaining fighter. I go out and and um, I hit hard and I like to scrap. So nothing's gonna change this fight. Um, I'm still the same fighter. I like to scrap. I like to fight. Uh, I don't mind getting hit and I don't mind giving it back. Um, but you will see a finish in the UFC. You know, um, out of my 11 wins, I have 10 finishes, submissions, TKOs. KOs when the guys are sleeping on the mat, and um, you're gonna see one of those. Um, the UFC is gonna see one of those um, this up- upcoming fight. You know the cliche we always hear in the fight game is you know stylistically I love this matchup. I, I love this fight for myself. Uh, so why do you like this this matchup for yourself? You know, Jason. Like I said, it's not personal, man. You know, um, th- I think that's what separates me from um, a lot of the guys in the UFC. I'm probably one of the only guys in my division that would do something like this. You know what I'm saying? It's Thanksgiving. And I'm saying, you know, forget Thanksgiving. I want to fight. Put me in. So I'm not eating on Thanksgiving. And it's against a really tough opponent that has a lot of good experience. Um, and I'm going in there 0-2. You know what I'm saying? And you know, everybody knows what happens when you lose three in a row in the UFC. You know what I'm saying? Most of people get cut. But I'm willing to take that risk, man. I'm willing to take that risk. You know why? Because I'm 29 years old. I still love what I do. I know that I have huge potential. And I'm way too talented to to just let that opportunity slip by. Like I said, uh, I take pride in calling myself a fighter. And that's that's what I really am. You know, people might think it's not smart management-wise, for my career-wise, but I don't care. Um, I always bounce back. You know, I, I always have roadblocks in my life, in my career. And I always bounce back stronger. And um, this is what's, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to bounce back stronger. I understand there is pressure, no matter what you know what, what's happening in your previous fights. You know, there's always pressure in fighting. But do you feel maybe a, a little more pressure in this fight as, say, opposed to your first two UFC fights? Absolutely. You know, um, my job's on the line, and. Um, I'm risking a lot here. I asked for this. You know, it's not like uh, the UFC, Sean Shelby called and was like, Andre, take this fight. You want to take this fight? I can't say no. You know, I'm 0-2. I have to say yes. But I'm the one that reached out and was like, hey, I'll take the fight. If no one's going to take it, which I know no one will take it, would have took it, unless it was somebody dying against the UFC. But somebody in the roster, I doubt somebody was going to say, hey, you know, I'll fight in two weeks. I'm that guy. I'm that guy that doesn't care. I just want to go in, perform, um, and do what I do, you know. And it's not about the money. It's not about the glory. It's not about the fame. I want to be a champion one day, you know, and um, I'm just taking this opportunity. And, of course, uh, train down there in in South Florida. Uh, Are you working with anybody uh, over the last two weeks, maybe uh, different type of sparring partners just to get ready for this fight than maybe guys that you normally work with? Man, it's been crazy because I kind of went back home uh, to the northeast to Rhode Island. And then um, <laughs> right when I got off the plane, I was with my son. I got the call like, hey, you got the fight. So I'm like, damn. <laughs> if, if, I, if I got the plane before, if I got the call before I got on the plane, I wouldn't even win on the plane. So I had to really readjust for like two, three days. It was kind of hectic, kind of chaotic. Um, staying at my parents' house and... Uh, it was going cold. But I was getting my training in with, uh, with a lot of my um, old coaches, old teammates, and um, a lot of the guys from Top Game Management. So, um, you know, I adapted. And although it was a little chaotic, you know, flying back and forth from Florida to Rhode Island in a span of, like, you know, one week, it'll make that win that much sweeter. You know, it'll make the win that much sweeter for me. Now, while you're up there, I, I know uh, you know your buddy old uh, Rebella likes to throw some jabs at you. Did, did you get him back with any jabs? No, nah, I avoided him, man. 
I don't want to see his face. <laughs> Greg likes Greg likes to rag on everybody. He's been ragging me about my magic. It's it's been a uh, magic off to a good start, but it's been a little rough the uh, <laughs> the past couple of weeks. Magic hey, man, have come hey, down to reality. After that knockout KO, I try to stay away from him. I'm gonna give him at least three months before I, I see him in person because that head is probably so big right now. So I just gotta stay away from him. Stay away from him. Of course, uh, we all know you, you have been known for those flashy knockouts. We all remember those flashy knockouts at CS. And, and one of the things I've always thought about you is at, at, at some point, do we see you and Brian Kelher, uh, you know, square up again? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you, hey, Jason, you know me right now. I'm, I'm down to fight anybody, anybody. I don't care, you know. Um, as long as I love doing it and, I, you know, as long as I continue to love doing what I do, I'm going to fight. Um, I love the, I love fight week. That's, that's my only work week that, that we actually get the glory for, you know what I mean? And, and I live for that. I'm training 365 days a week, but everybody knows that we don't get paid. We don't get, we don't get the glory. We don't get the glory while we're training in the gym. You know, we get the glory when it's fight week, when everything's taken care of, when we, when we're just, all we got to worry about is cutting weight. So if you guys see, call me to fight Brian Keller, hell yeah, I'll fight him again. Um, I know we're kind of on different paths, you know what I mean? He's, he's, he's having a lot of success in, um, the UFC right now. You know, he's, he has two $50,000 bonuses. Uh, he won two fights. So, um, he's kind of on a different path right now, but, um, we will meet again, you know, and, um, he's a good fighter. He has a great guillotine, but Hey, he tapped, he tapped out some, some, uh, Top 13 in the world at that time. Top 15 guy in the world at that time. He had me in that for about three minutes, and I didn't tap up. Uh, I actually gave him a good fight. So, um, you know, I, I'll i fight anybody. You know that. <laughs> I think there's just a good storyline there. I think that's something that the UFC can sell. You mentioned about how much you, you, you are looking forward to fight week next week. Uh, I got to ask, do you, do you have the walkout song picked out already? I don't. I don't, man. I'm I'm real funny with that. I just go with my gut, and I'm like, hey, I like the song, and I'll just I'll just go with it. You know what I mean? Um, so I don't. <laughs> but of course, uh, this is going to be next week UFC Fight Night 123 there in Fresno, California. Have you ever been to California before? I never been to California, so I'm I'm really excited. I'm really excited to see Cali. I, I love Vegas. Like I love. I love the scenery. Like you know, besides the strip, the strip is cool. You know what I mean? Like for one night. Yeah, but you know, I'll probably do that for like one night if I'm there for a week. But the rest, I, I love the locals. I like the food, and I like the mountains. I like just looking at the mountains, driving down the highway and seeing the mountains. I love that. So I can't wait to go to California. Yeah, we can't get that in Florida. We can't get the mountains here in Florida. Yeah, I still love Florida. You know, I love the Florida Ocean better than anything because there's no waves all the time. You know, and uh, but um, definitely excited to go to Cali. And, of course, we'll be able to see this fight next week on FS1. Andre, man, as always, I appreciate time. And let everyone know where they can follow you out on social media. Hey, guys. I uh, appreciate you guys following me on um, Instagram and Twitter, Andre Souk MMA. Um, got some good pics. Got some good stories. Follow my fight week. Um, also, like my fan page, Andre the Asian Sensation, Souk Don't have to spell my whole name. It'll show up. It'll come up.